A woman is tossed to the ground and sexually assaulted. Search for this sexual attacker. Two customers cower under a table as they give up their cash. That was a violent crime captured on a doorbell yeah, camera. more prevalent than ever. They are now being Why? assaulting his ex-girlfriend. Just days earlier, after a realtor was attacked during an open house, he eventually tackles her from behind and knocks her to the ground. And eyes very early last Saturday, just before 5 o'clock, she's on the ground. This guy's on top of her, trying to sexually attack her. She is Okay, I don't care if you're an Andrew Tate fan or a Hamza fan, but there is such thing called as toxic masculinity. Hold up. Let me finish, all right? I don't mean this mainstream toxic masculinity where these feminists use. These people, these feminists, they don't want masculinity to really exist at all. According to them, healthy masculinity looks like this, this, and this. Hmm. Let me explain to you non-bullshitically what is healthy masculinity. Healthy masculinity is the ability to channel your raw masculinity in a productive, effective, positive manner. So physical strength, aggression, anger, these are not so-called toxic or bad. They are completely neutral. They are only bad if you use it in the wrong way. Like using your strength to beat your wife or using your aggression and bursting out because someone accidentally stepped on your toe. <laughs> Physical strength, anger, aggression, these are all good qualities if you use it in a productive and positive manner. Like you want to win sports, you protect your families, protect your friends. You come up with a project to help millions and communities of people around you. You be assertive by being a leader and you lead your team, you lead your group to better themselves up. Climb up the social economic ladder. I remember I used to love martial arts so much when I was a teenager. I wanted to learn karate. Now my parents are not going to send me to any classes and I obviously don't know how to learn karate at all alone by myself. So there was this club at school where I chose karate because I wanted to learn how to fight. And boy, I was so committed to learning karate. I didn't care people are literally laughing at me. And the other people in the karate class, we were doing this, you know, practice moves. <laughs> you know, and people go, ha ha, look at them. <laughs> it was so embarrassing at that time, man. But I love doing it. I love doing masculine shit like this. But not many joined the class, you know, there were like only 10 to 20 students at one time and until one day there are no more karate classes they got disbanded because there were simply not enough students enrolling in the classes the karate teacher you know he thinks that ah, this school is bullshit I'll just better teach other places as well and just like that I stopped learning karate and it just broke inside me that I don't have this ability to fight and protect myself and my loved ones. I can't defend myself and it got me thinking why is it so hard? Why is it so hard for me to learn how to fight? To do all these masculine things? Why there were so many obstacles? From my parents not willing to send me to karate classes to the school disbanding these karate classes and there's media promoting that uh, aggression is wrong, it's not supposed to be there, violence, the ability to be violent is wrong. It just hits me that literally now, me and other people around me just can't defend themselves. We are literally weak. We must learn how to fight. We must learn how to protect our friends and family. But these days it's just so hard trying to get into classes also costs you like so much and your father probably doesn't even know how to fight either. So you see, masculinity is not bad or toxic. It's just the way how we channel our masculinity that interprets whether masculinity is bad or healthy. And of course this is also subjective. The left wants us to deconstruct masculinity totally and be like those woke useless men while the right wants to go into full patriarch 
where women have no power at all and they have to obey men at all times. And this is why it's so hard to know what healthy masculinity is actually like. We have the both political spectrum left and right wanting to divide masculinity which in essence both masculinity in the extremes left and right are totally toxic. But let me take the confusion out of you, right? Healthy masculinity is the same as being a good man. What does it mean to be good? To act virtuously and righteously. Don't assault people, don't steal, don't do things that harm others. Pretty simple, right? And what does it mean to be a man? It is the ability to be physically strong, to be aggressive, to have anger, to actually stand up for yourself, to stand up for what you believe in and be able to take risks. So combine good and man and what you get is the ability to have physical strength, aggression, standing up for yourself and other manly attributes to act virtuously and righteously. And it shares almost the same definition as healthy masculinity. The ability to channel your raw masculinity in a productive and positive manner. The man on the left cannot do that. The man on the right cannot do that either. The man on the left, they don't have the physical strength, they don't have the aggression, the capability to protect and provide for people. While people on the right are not acting virtuously and righteously. They think patriarchy where women have no control or power at all is the right thing to do. We don't want that. We want a balance in where men are practicing healthy masculinity for the prosper being of our communities, our society, our families, our friends, and our country. So subscribe to learn more about being a good man and having healthy masculinity as this channel is dedicated for that. And until then, take care and be fucking rock.